These animals on Pew Pew prison farm near Zomba are to play a vital part in protecting Central Africa from smallpox, but they will not suffer themselves. They are taken to the government pathologist's surgery where part of their skin is shaved and cleansed. Still used today is Edward Jenner's discovery that cowpox vaccine protects humans against smallpox, so cows are still infected. Don't talk to us about Jenner. Cowpox is not a serious disease in cows, and when they return to their pastures, they are immune to the disease and suffer no ill effects from their inoculation. The lymph or pulp they produce is purified in the laboratories, and samples are planted onto agar agar and other substances to grow into cultures. Only one kind of bacillus is wanted for the vaccine must be absolutely pure to be safe. Eventually, the finished vaccine is drawn off in liquid form. The vaccine is mixed with lanolin and put into small tubes. Each tube, incidentally, contains enough for 200 vaccinations, which, when you come to think of it, is a powerful lot of protection packed into a very small package. The tubes are sealed and dipped into hot wax, then cold water, as a further protection. Vaccine can be stored in a deep freeze indefinitely. And having put the cows and everybody to so much trouble, what happens to the vaccine? Well, you should know by now that it goes into people. Yes, people in hospitals and clinics and schools, not only in Nyasaland, but as far south as southern Rhodesia, get protection from the vaccine produced at Zomba. And not only people who live in towns, for if they don't go to clinics, the vaccine comes to them. Smallpox could flare up anywhere at any time, leaving death in its wake were it not for the simple weapon that Edward Jenner placed in the hands of medical science.